one election, two parties, and people are reacting in two different ways to their efforts. If you ask them, the Democrats will say, we are winning, and the Republicans will say, we are winning. But even they themselves don't know if they are doing the right thing. The Democrats are indeed running away with the lead in early voting, as the Republicans stay fully and completely committed to in-person voting. Yes, there are a few states such as Arizona where the Republicans are doing whatever they can to help their voters to mail their ballots, but those cases are outliers. The main objective in this election, at least from the White House standpoint, is to get more people out on the election day. As of now, both the parties, Republicans and the Democrats, are doing well to win their objectives. The Democrats now have a sizable lead over Republicans in getting their voters to request ballots. In North Carolina and Pennsylvania, the Democrats have built a 3 to 1 lead over Republicans in absentee ballot requests. In Florida, the gap is said to be around 700,000 requests in favor of Democrats. But this was going to happen anyway because a lot of Democratic-leaning voters want to mail their votes while Republican-leaning voters wait for the election day. So the lead is not surprising. I think I'll, this was expected to happen. But the unexpected part is more and more Democratic-leaning voters who did not vote in 2016 are requesting ballots. In Pennsylvania, the Democrats have got a lead of 100,000 requests over Republicans. Remember, these are voters who did not vote in 2016. In Michigan, the lead is around 20,000. In Wisconsin, it's around 10,000. We still have more than 50 days to this election, and this lead may end up becoming sizable by the time we watch the third debate between Biden and Trump. Will this be enough to win the election? I don't think so, but it will certainly be helpful in turning a close state into a winner and a distant one to be a close one. So how the results pan out will absolutely depend on how successful Republicans are in turning out the votes on the election day. But, but how many people will be ready to turn out on the election day is not at all an easy number to guess. The Republicans want uh, turn out as high as possible, but we are still not out of the coronavirus problem. In 2016, Trump got a massive thumbs up from voters in the 65 and above age group, and they played a massive role in helping him win states like Florida. Now, these voters are extremely vulnerable to COVID. If a small percentage of senior voters for Trump think, oh, well, it's actually not worth going and coming back on election day, it will make it extremely difficult for Republican candidates to edge out close elections. Trump has taken a position, and he is standing firmly by it. The Republican Party remains a bit confused about this, but he is standing firmly for in-person voting and against mail-in voting. And I have to agree with him. I mean, I actually agree with his logic. Trump has better odds of success with in-person voting than mail-in voting. He never had a 50% approval rating, which means he never had the support of the majority. The higher the turnout goes, the brighter his possibility of losing the election. So from his standpoint, in-person voting is better than mail-in voting. But the problem for him is no one knows where the number of coronavirus cases will be in November. Even in countries that have controlled the spread, such as Germany, France, or Italy, or other European nations, outbreaks are still happening. But the system they have got is keeping these outbreaks under pressure and quickly stopping them from spreading. If countries with few hundred cases are still struggling to get coronavirus cases to zero, there is no chance that the United States, at the current rate of infection, will be able to bring cases down to zero by election day. So if the pandemic keeps raging across the country on November 3rd, it will be very difficult for Republicans to achieve a high turnout. Now with early voting, remember Democrats are now bringing in voters who did not vote in 2016. To counter that, Republicans have to do the same. They have to find a way to bring in voters who did not vote in 2016, which means they should get more votes than they did in 2016. But if the pandemic is still out of control by that time, it is not going to happen. Thanks for watching.